So once you give advertisement uh, calling for expression of interest, you may get a lot of uh, uh, plants, resolution applicants with their plants. So it is the duty of the resolution professional to screen them according to the provisions of the code, provisions and regulations of the code and then those uh, resolution plants with, which meet the criteria filtering that you can call it as filtering and those only should be uh, presented before the committee of creditors and uh, that section 29a uh, that also uh, bars also have to be considered. The committee may approve any resolution plan with such modifications as it, as it deems fit. So now the, it is not that once the resolution plan has come and it qualifies or bars all the covered then it is being deliberated. So what is the purpose of deliberation? Uh, one is compliances with the law, uh, second is whether it is viable and feasibility study they can do. So they can ask you, ask the resolution professionals to come out with a better plan, whether they are willing to come out with that. As we have seen in Tisco versus Liberty, where in uh, uh, the, all the three plans which came in, H1 is admitted uh, to Tisco. And when the other uh, resolution applicant, uh, uh, Jindal Steelworks, wanted uh, to put, uh, present higher uh, matter, higher uh, resolution amount, then the committee of creditors, in the interest of maximum realization, they called again for fresh bids that is allowed. The resolution professionals shall submit the resolution plan approved by the committee to the adjudicating authority with the certification that A. Contents of the resolution plan meet all the requirements of the code and the regulations. B. The resolution plan has been approved by the committee. That should be the grounds. That is what a resolution professional is expected to present, yes or no. Uh, the resolution professional shall forthwith send a copy of the order of the adjudicating authority approving or rejecting a resolution plan to the participants and the resolution applicant. Uh, six. Uh, a provision in resolution plan which would uh, otherwise require the consent of the members or partners of the corporate debtor as the case may be under the terms of the constitutional documents of the corporate debtor, shareholders agreement, joint venture agreement or other document of a similar nature shall take effect notwithstanding such consent has not been obtained. A provision in the resolution plan which would otherwise require the consent of the members or partners of the corporate debtor, as the case may be, under the terms of the constitutional documents of the corporate debtor, shareholders agreement, joint venture agreements or other documents of the similar nature shall take effect, notwithstanding that such consent has been not very important point. No proceedings shall be instituted, initiated against the interim resolution professional or the resolution professional as the case may be for any actions of the corporate data prior to the insolvency commencement date. So, but that doesn't, that means that any violations that take place after the CIRP process announced that fellow can be held up. A person in charge of the management and control of the business and operations of the corporate data after a resolution plan is approved by the adjudicating authority, we make an application to the adjudicating authority for an order seeking the assistance of the local district administration uh, in implementing the terms of the resolution plan. So the protection also is being provided uh, this uh, thing. That is another point which is to be considered. Now taking all this into the Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court felt that on a conjoint reading of these provisions, it is amply clear that the stipulation is to recur the percentage of voting share of the financial creditors. For the purposes of the determining as in as is as to whether the proposed resolution plan has been approved by the COC or otherwise. When it comes to the method of voting and for determining the outcome of the voting with regard to other subjects other than the approval of the resolution plan discussed in the meeting of COC, the same is governed by 
regulation 25 as applicable in 2017 and the same is read as under that we have discussed regulation 25. Now uh, the further you know if it is not going to comply with all these things then liquidation is the only alternative there is no further alternative is possible. So um, once the here the what should and now the next question comes that uh, platform has shifted from the committee of creditors and then it is now before the adjudicating authority. So the question now the Supreme Court has taken up what are the uh, points, what is the duty and the justiciable actions of the adjudicating authority have been explained detailed in Era 33. Upon the receipt of a rejected resolution plan, the adjudicating authority is not expected to do anything more. But it is obliged to initiate liquidation process under Section 31 of the Code. The legislature has not endowed the adjudicating authority with the jurisdiction or authority to analyze or evaluate the commercial decision of COC, much less to inquire into the justness of the rejection of the resolution plan by the dissenting financial creditors. For the legislative history and background in which INB code has been enacted, it is noticed that completely it is not that notice that a completely new approach has been adopted for speeding up the recovery of the debt due from the defaulting companies. In the new approach there is a calm period followed by a swift resolution process to be completed within 20 to 70 days uh, outer limit, failing which the initiation of liquidation process has been made inevitable and mandatory and mandatory. Para 33. In the earlier regime, the corporate debtor could indefinitely continue to enjoy the product protection given under Section 22, 22 of SICA uh, Act or under the enactments which has now been forsaken. Besides, the commercial wisdom of COC has been given paramount status without any judicial intervention. Two important issues have been given. Then uh, the time limit of 270 days and also commercial wisdom of the committee of creditors cannot be questioned uh, by the adjudicating authority. Adjudicating authority is confined, should be confined to uh, the whether the plan is within the parameters and they should not go into uh, whether it is fair or not. Uh, all those things have been taken out. Supreme Court judgment is very, very clear. So that's what they say. It has now been for besides the commercial wisdom of COC has been given paramount status without any judicial intervention for ensuring completion of the stated process within the timelines prescribed by the INB code. There is an intrinsic assumption that financial creditors are fully informed about the very important paragraph uh, that is para 33. Um, the Honorable Supreme Court came to the conclusion this is an intrinsic assumption that the financial creditors are fully informed about the viability of the corporate debtor and feasibility of the proposed resolution plan. They act on the basis of thorough examination of the proposed resolution plan and the assessment made by their team of experts. The opinion on the subject matter expressed by them after due deliberations in COC meetings through voting as per voting shares is a collective business decision. The legislature consciously has not provided any ground to challenge the commercial wisdom of the individual financial creditors or their collective decision before the adjudicating authority that is made non-justiciable. So the, here is a very important para 33 of the report and the scope of the adjudicating authority's powers. And uh, this is also, uh, they have referred to para 34, uh, the Bankruptcy Law Reforms Committee. The key economic question in bankruptcy process, when a firm referred as a corporate debtor in the draft law defaults, the question arises about what is to be done. Many possibilities can be envisaged. One possibility is to take the firm into liquidation. Another possibility is to negotiate a debt restructuring where the creditors accept a reduction of debt on 
and NPV basis and hope that negotiated value exceeds the liquidation value. Another possibility is to sell the firm as a going concern and use the proceeds to pay off the creditors. Many hybrid structures of these board ca broad categories can be envisioned. The committee believes that there is only one correct forum for evaluating such possibilities and making a decision, a creditors committee where all financial creditors have votes in proportion to the magnitude of the debt that they hold. In the past, laws in India uh, have brought arms of the government, uh, legislature, executive or judiciary into, into this question. This has been strictly avoided by the committee. The appropriate uh, position, uh, appropriate position of a defaulting firm is a business decision and only the creditors should make it. So very aptly, the Honorable Supreme Court uh, went through that decision and then come. Now here the question is, uh, one is uh, the appellants have argued that they have not applied their mind. Therefore, the judiciary should intervene. Now, the Honorable Supreme Court is looking into the aspect whether judiciary has the capability to get into this. A judiciary has to interpret the process. So, they are going to decide the contours to what extent the adjudicating authority can uh, think of entering into the process. Now, the business decisions uh, taken by the committee of creditors are non-justiciable is very well uh, explain. The report also highlights that having timelines is the essence of the resolution process. It then refers to the principles driving the design of the new insolvency and bankruptcy resolution framework. While dealing with this aspect, it is noted that code would facilitate the assessment of the viability of the enterprise at a very, very early stage. The relevant extract of the report is again read down. The committee chose the following principles to design the new insolvency bankruptcy resolution framework. 1. The code will facilitate the assessment of viability of the enterprise at a very early stage. 1. The law must explicitly state that the viability of the enterprise is a matter of business and that matters of business can only be negotiated between the creditors and the debtor. While viability is assessed as a negotiation between creditor and debtor, the final decision has to be an agreement among the creditors who are all the financial financiers willing to bear the loss in the insolvency. 2. The legislature and the courts must control the process of resolution but not be burdened to make a business decision. The law must set up a calm period for insolvency resolution where the debtor can negotiate the assessment of viability without fear of debt recovery enforcement by the creditors. The law must appoint a resolution professional as the manager of the resolution period so that the creditors can negotiate the assessment of viability with confidence that the debtors will not take any action to erode the value of the enterprise. The professional will have the power and responsibility to monitor and manage the operations and assets of the enterprise. The professional will manage the resolution process of negotiation to ensure balance of power between the creditors and debtor and protect the rights of all the creditors. The professional will ensure the resolute reduction of asymmetry of information between creditors and debtors in the resolution process. The law must ensure that all the key stakeholders will participate to collectively assess the viability. The law must ensure that all creditors who have the capability and the willingness to restructure their liabilities must be part of the negotiation process. The liabilities of all creditors who are not part of the negotiation process must also be met in, a in any negotiated solution. The court will respect the rights of all creditors equally. The law must be impartial to the type of creditor in counting their weight in the vote and on the final solution in the resolving insolvency. The court must ensure that when the negotiations fail to establish viability, the outcome of bankruptcy must be binding. The law must to be ordered the liquidation of an enterprise which has been found unviable. This outcome of the negotiation should be protected against all appeals other than for very exceptional cases. So here also there is a very exceptional case that is given. And, uh, but however, the Honorable Supreme Court appears to not give importance to that.